Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of A Millennial's Guide to Real Estate Investing. Today I have Sam Kwok here who's been investing in real estate for four years now. Currently has 75 doors that he's holding, another 20 on the way, and he's doing four flips out of state. So thanks for coming on the show and excited to have you here. Yeah, I appreciate you, Anton. Thank you. No problem. Um, first, let's tell the people how you got started in real estate, mm -hmm. why real estate, what led you into it. Yeah, so uh, this this really began early uh, 2014. We got started with, well, let me backtrack. So uh, we were coming out of college, and honestly, uh, we wanted to become a real estate investor after reading the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I think everyone gets indoctrinated yep. into uh, real estate investing after they read that book. And um, we wanted to become a real estate investor. We were coming out of college, and honestly, we were we were at a very um, fragile time because we were scared, we were afraid because every you know everyone's graduating, and everyone's getting it. You know, all of our friends were getting the, the uh, into nine to five jobs, yeah. corporate life, right? And uh, we didn't we didn't necessarily want to opt in for that life. Uh, we knew we wanted to be a real estate investor, but um, you know we felt stuck, right? We didn't have the money, uh, we didn't have the credit. Uh, we didn't have the knowledge, nor do we have the relationship for us to even begin uh, exploring into this business. So uh, we got very fortunate, very blessed to have ran into a, uh, a group of mentors, uh, particularly particularly one gentleman that I can uh, that I can name. Uh, his name is Ed, and you know he played uh, a mentor uh, to us. And what we did is we bought him lunch. You know we took him out uh, as much as we could, uh, learn as much as we could, and we uh, at periods we worked uh, we worked for him for free. To learn as much as possible, gotcha. right? To to absorb and soak in all the all the all the knowledge about real estate investing. Um, so fast forward throughout the way and throughout the journey. Fast forward, my brother and I were able to buy, uh, acquire up to seventy five rental units, and just um, just as uh, Antoine has said, we're uh, working on twenty more twenty more units of acquisition, doing four fix and flips out of state, and um, we're looking to get into also Airbnb. Which is the the hot thing right now? So yeah, yeah life life is great. Um, where we're headed is we're looking to definitely grow and expand into to a bigger syndication, which, um, it, which more which looks like for those who don't know what that is, it's going out there and grabbing the attention of people who have a ton of money and starting a pool of money, um, officially known as a fund, and we're going to be utilizing that fund to do more acquisition on a higher scale. Gotcha. And then how did you, so about the mentorship thing, yep. that's I think super important because when I was in yep. college too, I had a real estate mentor who yep. taught me more about commercial side of things and, mm -hmm. but still even it's still real estate. So you still oh, yeah. learn right. how to underwrite the numbers. You still know what a good return is from a bad return. Right. So how did you find your mentor? Um, how did you find yeah. Ed or the other mentors? Sure. Yeah. So we actually ended up buying a program. Uh, we spent quite a bit of money on it. I'm not going to tell you how much, but yeah. we spent quite a bit of uh, money on the program and uh, Ed just so happens to be part of that program as well. So we met in a mutual uh, meeting, uh, kind of in a, during a workshop, in a presentation, and you know he stood out because he had a lot of results, and he done a quite a well for himself. He had he's had 40 years of experience. So we awesome. uh, take my yeah I remember we took him out to lunch uh, or was it yeah it was lunch uh, out in a buffet. Uh, sat over across the table and, and you know told him our concerns and he's like well this is what we need to do so he, he gave us he gave, he gave us a step one started going out there and, and um, our, our first step one really was just go out and find the deals yeah. right find the opportunities and uh, we learned how to do that and then the next thing we mastered was the negotiation process the next thing we mastered was going out and raising capital so really really one one skill set at a time we were able yep. to stack one one uh, one skill set on on top of the other and um, yeah, so that, that's really honestly how I got started in in learning. And of course, everyone everyone makes mistakes, and along the way, I did make yeah. plenty of mistakes. Uh, but it was all a learning lesson, and um, you know, it made it makes it makes me who who I am today. So exactly, yeah. yeah. No, I love that. Yeah, and it's about getting out there and networking. I mean, if you're in your room all day learning about investing <laughs> out of state and researching all these markets, you're never going to find that mentor. Right. So I Absolutely. normally tell people to go on bigger pockets, message every single person in your zip code. Yeah. Even if you don't want to invest there, those people are still in your same situation. Right. Because in LA or in Chicago, you know, maybe too expensive to invest locally, and sure. we need to invest out of state. That's why you're flipping houses out of state because right. obviously the numbers make sense somewhere else. Um, right. So networking, yeah, networking is the best way to find find that mentor, in my opinion. Yep. And then how did that? What was that first deal that you did? Were you were you and your brother more interested in flipping? 
or how did that first deal go down? And then if you, did you have to raise money for that first deal? Did you guys have money in your bank account that you funded it with? Yeah. So our, our first and second deal was super close. I think we're, they were within only a few weeks apart. Um, so the first deal we did, and I, I always get confused with this cause they were so close. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the, now that I'm thinking about it, the, the actual first deal we did was, it was a fix and flip and we actually raised that money through a partnership. So we, we knew a guy and I'm not going to make name the name, but, um, uh, he had some, he had some couple, um, couple hundred thousand dollars in his bank account and he wanted to retire and he, he didn't have necessarily all the, all the money that he wanted out of retirement. So he, he actually, um, uh, we met him through uh, the program as well that, that I, I talked about. Yep. And um, we were able to sit down with him, showed him some of the deals that we were working on. He loved it. And he said, listen, I want to get on this deal. Can I be a partner? I said, great. Yeah, you come and put down put down the entire amount that we needed for this deal and we'll make you a partner. So that's how I got to, through the first deal, which was a fix and flip. Uh, we actually ended up selling that on contract, meaning we sold it on seller financing. Oh, wow. So we're just yeah, we're just collecting checks uh, every month from the buyer. Um, the second deal that we done was a buy and hold. We actually bought four houses. Uh, again, that was on, we bought that through owner financing, Got it. which uh, we did a very small down payment of ten percent down, uh, and the remaining amount was financed uh, from the seller at fifteen year amortization at six percent interest. Uh, bought that 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 property cash flowed about. 500 600 bucks a month and we actually are in the process of selling it nice uh to to kind of move up to the next level of buying yeah buying more apartment buildings got it so that yeah. first deal let's talk about because it's very interesting because that's exactly how i started i yeah for me instead of finding somebody with you know a couple hundred grand to bring into a deal i went and found all the deal the neighborhood etc then right. presented a deal to my dad who funded that deal with 40 grand right. which was his 401k money so yeah, yeah, and then for that he, you know, he would raise all the money, and then we would split the profits or whatever it was. So is that right. what is that what you guys did? You guys <clears throat> split it right down the middle for him funding the deal, or you guys? Yeah, got... we did. Okay. Yeah, we gave him we gave him fifty fifty percent of the deal, and we obviously kept the fifty percent. And um, yeah, I, a lot of it now, even till today, we were giving away equity, uh, forty fifty percent of the equity, yep. just because um, you know, even if we do have large sums of cash that we call of our own. Uh, we like to keep that kind of in our yeah. own back pocket and yeah. protect, you know, protect whatever we built. Got it. Right. That's, and then for, that's huge. Yeah. And then for the passive income side of things, the fix and flip makes sense, you know, splitting the mm-hmm. profit 50, 50, cause you're going to sell it and you're going to get a lump sum of cash back. Right. But for the passive income property, putting the 10% down, how did you and your brother, did you guys, did you and your brother have that money in your bank account <laughs> or did you use it from the flip to actually buy those? rental properties. Yeah. So we, we, it was the same format. So we went out and got an investor, um, who oh, got it. came into the 10% down. Yep. And gave him, you know, 40, 50, 40 to 50% of the equity. And, uh, that's usually our format. Got it. That's how okay, we cool. do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause I've, I've thought about doing that for single family homes or for smaller <laughs> rental properties, but then it's like at the end of the day, you're splitting 400 bucks, like two or three ways. It's like, sure. Oh my God, it's a man. It's more of a burden than a, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you if you really take a, if you really think about it, you're putting none of your own money in. Yeah. Right. No, you're right. So the, yeah. Yeah. So the return you're cash. getting is inf- yeah, it's infinite. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Cool. And yeah. then after that, did you and your so it seems like you guys had the system down. Were you guys doing these projects in Chicago mm-hmm. or were you doing it out of state? Yeah. So the buy and hold mostly are within uh, the Chicago neighborhoods. Got so um, actually more of Chicago suburbs. <laughs> Um, we've done Chicago before Chicago, like in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, for those who are listening that live in like large metropolitan areas, um, it, it can become very much of a pain. Um, yeah. especially with the, like, if you're doing stuff in LA or New York or some of these larger cities, um, you're going to have to face a lot of anti landlord, uh, type of rules where the odds are stacked against your favor. Got it. So. Uh, a lot of the rentals we do now are more so in rural, rural or um, suburban areas where it's a little, little bit more landlord friendly than your, you know, big city. city yeah. Right. Because does Chicago have like um, rent ceilings and stuff like that? Rent control? Uh, they've tried introducing it. Um, I think uh, Illinois, uh, thankfully, was smart enough to turn it down. Yeah. Yeah, I know places like uh, California and New York have rent control, so yeah. it, it's harder harder to be a landlord there than, than yeah. yeah, like 
places like Texas for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, I'm in Los Angeles <laughs> and all the investors here who want to buy rental properties or buy a duplex and live in one unit, I'm like, yo, if that t- if you want to raise rent on that tenant, good yeah. luck. If you're in L- the city of LA and then in being in California, the laws are all yep. not in your favor because it's a very... I know. <laughs> it's a very uh tenant friendly state and no not landlord at all that's why i do all my buying holds out of state as well in yep. tennessee and texas or wherever right Ohio. it's smart yeah and then so tell me how how did you guys go from those it was four single family homes you bought at yep. first right and then how did you guys go <clears throat> over a couple of years from four to 75 units did you buy some bigger buildings or did you yeah. guys just keep replicating the process yeah, we started looking at bigger things. So the ne- the the next thing I think we looked at um, was a three unit, and then we bought another four unit, and then we ended up buying a thirty six unit. So we like jumped from four to thirty six. Yeah, and then wow. that we had we had like four other partners, so we had to do a little bit more of work for that. Um, we had yeah four partners that brought pieces of the down payment, uh, of which um, we had to run credit on all four because we actually used the bank. For this purchase yeah so we did bank financing and um the next thing we bought was a 24 unit uh that was under owner financing and then and the next one we bought was eight unit and now we're kind of kind of going uh we have a range now eight to 20 unit is is seemed to be like the average that we buy got it uh, but once we start doing syndication now we're looking at 100 to 200 unit purchases where it's like you know you're buying like the whole town pretty yeah. much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so how are you how are you finding these deals? That's my one question cuz I I'm doing my first apartment building, it's 20 units. Uh-huh. Um and you know that one took me 6 months to find. Yeah. You know, so how are you how are you going about doing that? Sure. So we actually have a a team of people that go around and drive and call, you know, for rent signs. Uh, they, they they go and create that network. Uh we also work with a group of wholesalers as well. Um and then we do direct mail campaign okay. um with very specific uh, lists. We don't just send it to like everybody. Yeah. Uh, we send it to to a very strategic targets that we know are going to turn into a lead, and um, and and sometimes we use we use a broker. Uh, we use two brokers uh, specifically that we've trained them to think like an investor, and um, they're at a point where we have this really tight relationship where every listing that they can find they they come through us first. Got it. So yeah, we've created that relationship. Um, so it's various sources, right? We built this multiple network that we have that ultimately brings in deals to us that are not in the market. Yeah. That you know they're they're off the market type of thing. Got it. So that's how we find our deals today. Got it. Awesome. And then going from the four unit to a thirty six unit, <laughs> was it a big? Yep. You know, was it a challenge in raising money because people were like, "Hey, you've never done this any, you know, you've never done this size yeah. of a deal before," and so it's kind of funny. Uh, we we did money raising at a um, at a formal a form formal party. Um, it was a bunch of people with wine, getting drunk. Um, we we went and it was a group of investors just having dinners, right? Yeah. And I was like, what a perfect time for me to just table hop, right, and and talk to people. So I remember um, talking to two people, and they're like, hey, yeah, we're we're having a hard time finding the deals. Yeah. You know, and, and they're like, we have a couple thousand dollars, like a couple hundred thousand dollars, like in our bank account. We don't know what to do with it. So like, come with me, sir, if you want to live, right? And uh, we we brought him to uh, to my my partner and my my brother at the time. Yeah. And we kind of we kind of snuck out of the party party to like in a seclusive like seclusive area. And we were like writing things down on the napkin and showing the numbers, right? So it, we were literally raising money with this in this like really formal like party. Everyone had their tux on. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So. Um, a lot of times people think you raise money in these really formal settings, but a lot of times it happens in a golf 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 yeah. games, um, happens when you're out in a restaurant. So you have to be prepared with that knowledge and really know how to present yourself in a way that um, you're you're seen as the expert. Absolutely, yeah, and like they yeah. say on Shark Tank, know your numbers, right? So know your numbers. Even if you yep. don't know the numbers on, you know, don't bring up your phone with the Excel on it. Just you know, right, you right. need to know those numbers by heart, and at least, yep. at least an estimate of those numbers of the return that's going to generate what the rough costs are. Yeah. And then, so for that deal, did you and your brother put any money in, or did you guys just take a thirty percent <clears throat> management fee and give the rest to the equity? How did you kind of yeah. deal with that? Yeah. So we actually have for the, for the thirty six unit, we uh, kept thir- uh, we kept twenty five percent of the deal Got it. without cool. putting any of our own credit, without putting any of our own cash. Okay. Right. So essentially, everything else is all investors. 
um, all investors' money and, and equity share. But the beautiful thing on on, on something like that is 25% on a 1.5 million dollar property is is pretty good. Like yep. especially if it's generating you know um, fifteen thousand dollars a month in cash flow, 25% of that isn't too bad. If, That's good. You know, yeah, coming from the place that we we hadn't have to put our own money in. Yeah. So it was just all negotiations, structuring everything. Um, finding the people to invest, finding the finding the right sellers. That's all. That's yeah. really all it takes for you to to put a to put a deal together. Got it. Cool. And then you said you didn't have to sign on the loan. So who did sign on the loan? Um, the investors. You. So how many investors were there? Three of them. Uh, we had four. Four of them. So they and yeah. they were all comfortable with signing on the loan as well and yep. putting all their. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, because. Yeah. Because for people who are like me, you know, listening to this podcast, getting out of college, want to get into, you know, maybe they have a full time job and they have an yeah. income, but they want to get into multifamily investing. That's a perfect example of just putting the deal together and you got twenty five percent of the deal. And right. I know it's a whole lot of work finding those people to invest, finding the deal, underwriting yeah. the deal and then managing the deal. But still that shows you even if you don't have good credit, you can get into multifamily real estate. Oh, absolutely. As long as you put the deal together, you know. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then you said in the future, you're going to look into getting into syndications and all that kind yes. of stuff. So, um, yeah, I've been, cause that's something that I want to get into as well. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm doing this 20 unit, taking it down myself. So now I have a, yeah. some rapport kind of like you have, sure. you have, you have the rapport now with the 36 yeah. unit and some investors and then getting into the hundred units and doing syndication. So yeah. Um, yeah. Once, once awesome. you take down, once you take down a Moby Dick, it just becomes easier to catch it. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's 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 that easier. But obviously, you know, doing a hundred unit deal is a whole nother level, right? Yeah. We're 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 literally ten xing from what what we thought was normal. So yeah, uh, we're actually getting a little bit of mentorship from a uh, from the former chairman of Top Golf, and awesome. he's he's got this uh, fund as well. So we're we're so this, that's the next level mentor, right? So yep. we had a first level mentor that that took us very far and now we're getting a next level mentor that's taking us even further yep. into something doing bigger so you always need mentors that, that always take you to the next level and and along the way you have to kind of graduate to the next thing love it and then how did you find was this did you find this mentor through networking and stuff like that as well <laughs> yeah so we got introduced to this person by uh, actually our church pastors so um awesome. it's, it's, yeah it's just all a matter of putting yourself out there yep. and you know and people sharing what you're doing right exactly yeah. so um yeah, we, we meet a lot of people that way, just getting introduced, and um, yeah, it. it's it's helpful. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Um, what's the best way for people to reach out to you if they have more questions or yeah. want to learn more about your syndication down the road? For sure. So we have a uh, we have a YouTube channel, uh, the Quack Brothers, T-H-E-K-W-A-K -E -K Brothers. So we pay attention to our YouTube channel quite a bit. Um, if you leave a comment on our videos, we usually respond within 24 to 48 hours. So if you want to reach us out, reach us out through that. Uh, if you look at look at every single one of our videos, you look at the uh, the link description, you'll see all of our like Instagram and Facebook, awesome. the whole nine yards. Awesome. Yep. So that's the Quack Brothers on YouTube. Thanks for yep. coming on the show again, sharing your knowledge about investing and how to get started, go from zero to 75 units yes, in just sir. a couple years. Awesome. Thanks yep. for coming on the show. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out to me, they can reach out to me on Instagram. It's probably the best, Martel Antoine, M-A-R-T-E-L-A-N-T-O-I-N-E. Thanks again, Sam. All right. Thanks. Bye.